Um, really give me perspective. Um, so the community we were working in, um, it was obviously very underprivileged compared to where, you know, compared to America. And uh, all the kids there, um, they had one school that they could go to, and the school had like one building, but it was like a community center. And like, so like the, all the classes that they took were like in like little like handmade shacks. It was like po like four poles and like a tin roof or like a palm leaf roof. Um, so just being able to go there really gave me perspective to be thankful for what I have here. Um, and it was also really cool to see, you know, how willing to help and how happy to help everyone was there, including the children. I mean, they were we were at one point um, filling in this massive hole with a bunch of trash in it. So we had to clean out the trash and all that stuff. But then we were filling it up with like palm branches and sand. Um, and there were like little, probably anywhere from five to 10 year old kids lifting, you know, 70 pound bags of sand and like moving. Well, I mean, they were doing it like together. Um, but like they were all just helping out and like they were happy to help, had big smiles on their faces. It was, it was fun for them. Um, so just being able to see that kind of really made me appreciate, you know, just the human soul for that matter. One of the things that Kata talked about after that trip and then one of the things that Thad talked about after that trip was just how much that changed, not just Kata's mentality, but that changed his game. That, that mm -hmm. just kind of helped him grow as a player. And I'm wondering how you think that might be able to help you go into next season. I mean, it, it really just makes me want to take advantage of what I have and all the opportunities that I have. I mean, we've got amazing facilities here that are available to us 24-7 um, compared to the kids back in El Cocal where it's like they have nothing. And I mean, if they, the only opportunity they get is if they have to, you know, pay for it. And, you know, obviously for me, all this is free. And even then, like nine times out of 10 or maybe even more than that, like they have, they can't pay for it. Um, so really it's just for me to be able to take advantage of all the opportunities that we're given here at this great university um, and that really with that take my game to the next level. Is that something when you think about in your first years, you think you've done that enough or is that something that you feel like there's still room to grow in that area? I mean there's always room to grow. Um, I mean I definitely, I've, I've definitely had my fair share of late nights here um, and early mornings um, just getting in here and getting extra work in. But at the same time there's always room for improvement. finding you know, little windows here and there throughout the day to make sure I'm working on my game when I can be. Like, what are um, I don't know, some of your goals here this, this summer? The, I'm sure you're trying to improve on everything, but is there anything specifically coming off the of last season that you think, you know, this is an area that I need to improve in? Um, I'd say the biggest thing for me, um, I mean, I, I think I definitely got better with it last year, um, but um, I want to be able to make sure that everyone knows that I can guard a lot more than just a five. I mean, I know my freshman year, going into last year, like pick and roll situations, I feel like I was a lot better uh, being able to stay in front of guards. But now I want to be able to make sure that I can guard a three or a four if I have to. Um, so, I mean, a lot of situations last year, like you want small ball, and it, would, like, it worked very well. But I want to be able to be on the court in small ball situations. How frustrating was that? And it's like, it's happening all over basketball. I mean, it gets frustrating, but at the same time, it's like motivation. I mean, because that's clearly where the game's going is being, you know, more skill oriented. Be got to be able to handle the ball, got to be able to run, got to be able to shoot, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I mean, that's just motivation for, for me to work to get to that point where I can be that kind of small ball guy. Uh, be on the floor during a small ball situation. Like I know last year around this time, there was some upheaval and things were changing in the program, scrambling to get ready with Coach Holman and all that. How is it different from a player's perspective when you, I mean, obviously there's going to be more stability, but this summer compared to last summer, what is the difference? What is the big value for that, having that continuity now compared to last year? <laughs> The coaches did a great job last year. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of you know uncertainty with the whole switch, especially so late in the game. Um, but the coaches did a great job of kind of. I mean, they kind of proved it. We kind of proved it throughout the season, um, just with you know them kind of understanding, getting to know us, and understanding us in the same way with us for them. Um, but this year, I think the biggest thing is just that security. I mean, we know what we're going to get, but at the same time, we have the entire summer to work, not just you know. 
part of it, like especially with uh, Coach Q, our strength coach. I know he came in a little bit later in the game. And now we have the entire summer to work with him. We have the entire summer to work with our nutritionist, the entire summer to work with all the coaches. And we know what we're going to get now. Now it's all tra full transparency. We actually just talked about that um, in our team meeting the other day, um, just being fully transparent with each other um, and, and any, in every situation. And I think that's something that's really huge. This, this may be way premature, but is the mentality different? Because last year, everybody wrote you guys off and talked about that a bunch of times. There were no real expectations. Mm -hmm. After what you guys did last year, people were thinking, well, now you got to go further next year. Is that a different kind of pressure, a different mentality as you go through these workouts? I mean, I don't know. I think. A lot of people, I mean, I think they have a little bit higher expectations for us, but at the same time, I don't know if the expe expectations are too high because of how much we lost. I mean, we obviously we lost the Big Ten Player of the Year in Kata, and then probably one of the greatest leaders ever in Ohio State history in Jay Sean Tate, and then we got guys like scores like Cam Williams, and then Andrew Dockich, who was a leader on and off the floor. Um, so we lose a lot of, with that guys, but at the same time, we're gaining a lot. I mean, the freshmen haven't come in yet, but just being able to watch a little bit of their film and get to know them personally, and then we got new guys like C.J. Walker and Keyshawn Woods come in, and they. They're already, they're already working, and they, in open gyms, they're proving their talent. So, I mean, they're fun to play with. I mean, they're easygoing guys, and they always try to make the right play. And I mean, with all the guys that are coming back, they're all working too, and they're all ready to take their game to the next level. So, I think we should be all right. Last year, but last summer, you said one of the things you wanted to work on for this past season was uh, not getting tired in games. Mm -hmm. I know you had an injury this past season that kind of threw things off, but. Did you feel that you were able to accomplish that goal, or yeah? Did so before I got hurt, um, I didn't get tired. Um, I mean, the, one of the biggest things to help with that was like improving my um, body composition. I think we talked about a little bit last year, um, like body fat percentage and muscle mass and everything. And I got down to the lowest I've ever been. I was like, we did the bod pot. I was like. Two percent. I mean, I don't know how accurate that is. There's always some kind of margin of error because two percent is like kind of low. Um, but <laughs> but um, I definitely, you know, I was I was able to go run, jump, do whatever, you know, whenever I wanted, and I never really got tired. I mean, obviously, there's points where like you get you're gonna get tired, but then I could like recover really quickly. That was the big thing. Um, and then throughout the year, like after I got hurt, it took me a little bit to get back into it and get used to it. And then throughout the rest of the year, I kind of got back to that level again. So I definitely think it's something that I want to have again this year, for sure. And I wanted to ask you about the basketball tournament this summer. Uh, Scarlet and Gray and Big X, they're in the same bracket. <laughs> so if they both win two games, they play each other. Right. Who you for? <sighs> That's tough. Um, man. If I had to pick one, it'd probably be the guys that I actually played with. So it'd probably be the Big Ten team. Um, but then again, like I grew up watching all the guys in the um, Scarlet and Gray team. So I mean, I don't know. It'll be a fun game to watch. It'll be competitive. I know that. It'll be the young guys versus the old guys. So I think it should be fun. Mike, you played so much as a freshman. You were a starter. Mm -hmm. Just saying, everyone that's that you're losing, Kata, Jay, Sean. Mm -hmm. Basketball year of your life for your being half at your halfway point right mm -hmm. here. How big is this for you? Your mindset, sophomore, junior year. I mean, I mean, it's definitely going to be a step up. I mean, we we did lose a lot of talent, but and but that's just my opportunity to step up. You know, I mean, I feel like I'm ready. I'm ready to work. I've been working. Um, and the time, the little time we had off, like when I went on the service trip and everything, like I was still doing as much as I can on the service trip. I mean, I have to get up a little early to go jog or take time out, take time out of the, you know, free time to like, I don't know, go do push-ups or whatever. Um, but, you know, the time off, I was working, and then ever since we've got back, I've been working um, outside of doing my schoolwork. So um, I'm ready to take my game to the next level, and hopefully this season will prove that. When you look at what Ohio State did lose in Kata and uh, it's a lot of leaders in terms of guys that are gone. Do you see kind of, I guess maybe too early to tell, but like, a new set of kind of leaders, including yourself, kind of stepping up and trying to mold what this kind of team mentality will be in the upcoming year? Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of the greatest aspects of being a leader is your ability to teach. Um, and, and with the example that, you know, Kata, JT, Cam, and Dockage all set, especially like JT, I mean, I think everyone knows the kind of leader that JT was. 
um, so like vocally, leading by example, everything. Um, he set the example. So guys learned from him, um, you know, and from that, like guys like CJ, he's going to be our senior point guard next year. Um, he's really stepped up his leadership role. And he's kind of, ever since he got here, he's been kind of a laid back guy. It's just kind of his personality. But now it's been like he's been stepping up and being more vocal and leading by example and working. And then, you know, other guys like Joey Lane, even though he's, you know, he's a walk on. I mean, he's still guys listen to him I and mean, he understands the work at work that it takes to be successful. He's been here the longest out of anyone here. And, uh, you know, even he's been like stepping up in a leadership role, uh, which is something that he has every right to do. Um, and then guys like me just trying to be vocal like, I, like I've always been and then work hard, lead by example. I mean, and then it's just everyone's trying to step up in their own way. Yeah, we've been talking about figuring that whole yeah. name situation out. <laughs> but when you're dealing with some guys that are coming in, obviously Keyshawn's going to play a big role this year in CJ going forward. What, what have you seen from those guys in open gyms, and, and how much can a guy like Keyshawn help you with guys in some depth there in the backcourt? Keyshawn does everything right. Like, what I mean by that, like, he could have a contested shot, he'll make the extra pass. He could drive the lane, and then it could be help side defense coming over, he'll kick the ball out. Like, it's insane. Like, I don't know if I've ever played with a guy that is that unselfish. I mean, if it's, open, if it's an open shot, he's going to take it, which he should. But at the same time, like, I've gotten probably some, – I, sometimes I, would, I don't even expect the ball because it's, like, it's a good shot, but, like, then he gives it to me, and, then like, I can make – like, it's, like, the better shot. You know what I mean? Like I don't know, it's his unselfishness and willing to willingness to make the and want to make the right play is just something that like I've never. It's it's, it's going to help our team out a lot. I mean, just with him being able to play multiple positions and handle the ball and shoot the ball and get to the cup, like it, everything he does is just it's fluent. And then guys like CJ obviously he can't play this year, um, but I mean, he had he has this like step back, especially off of ball screens. It's so like normally on ball screens, big men just kind of like sit there and they try to stay in front of them because they're driving. But he has this one thing where like he'll take one quick dribble forward and they make this huge step back and then shoot it over top. And like you can contest it easily, but it goes in. Like he's got that ability and then his ability to use his body and then, you know, flip it over, you know, def taller defenders is really good. So um, in practice, especially this year, he's really going to make a lot of people better. Yeah, it's definitely something. Um, one of the things that, um, I mean, we, me and Coach, like in our end of the year meeting, uh, me and Coach Holtman sat down and talked about things that, you know, I can improve on. Um, and one of those things that he plans on doing is, you know, if I can do it, is guarding the four and playing the four. Um, because I think a lot of the time, and, you know, especially in the Big Ten, if you can have two bigs on the floor at one time, it can, it can be super helpful, um, especially with how different mining Caleb games are. Um, so, you know, going forward, I mean, we, we've been doing yoga, or we did yoga um, in the postseason, um, and we're going to start it up here again um, in the near future. And just the ability that yoga has given me to be able to sit down and be quicker. I mean, the biggest thing for me was just sitting down and, like, having mobility in my hips. And yoga just, like, makes it so much. Like, I can sit down in a body squat for, like, ever now, and it's just, like, easy. So um, just being able to work, do whatever I need to do to get my body in the position to make sure whether I'm quicker, whether I need to sit down, be in better shape, whatever. Um, I'm already in the process of working to be able to get in that position. I guess kind of along those lines, obviously the team had a lot of success last year. You certainly had a hand in that. But your, your role seemed a bit inconsistent. And I know mm -hmm. that injuries played a little back there in that too. But just overall, when you look back for your season personally, like what are your thoughts on how, how does it sit it was a big teaching point for me because um, obviously I had the injury and I was out for, I think it was about a month. And then even coming back, like I had to wear that robot. I have a brace on my ankle and then I took that off finally. And like, I mean, it's just that kind of an, a high ankle sprain. It's like, it's always there. It's always nagging. Like I'm still having super minor issues with it. I mean, like I'm fine. I'm playing without a brace or whatever. I'm, I'm full go 100%, but like there's, it's always a nagging thing. Um, and just with the way that the team 
began to play while I was hurt, I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, I think we, we smacked Michigan State. We came back from down 20 against Michigan. We smacked Wisconsin. I mean, I played a little bit in the Wisconsin game, but that was like like two, three minutes or whatever. And uh, I mean, you just got to respect that. You got to understand that's just how it goes sometimes. And that was something I had to learn. And I had a problem I had, you know, to struggle with. But at the same time, I think it was one of the best life lessons for me. Um, I mean, just because life's not always going to give you everything you want. And that's not how God created, you know, life to be on this earth. And, you know, it's just something that you just got to be patient and, and trust him with everything and then just work hard and try to get back, back to where you were. Mm -hmm. I expected him to stay. Um, I didn't really, I mean, I think they interviewed him just because of the success he's had at the school up north. Um, I mean, you got to respect that. I mean, with the runs they've had the last two years, I mean, it's impressive. Um, you know, I mean, I've, I've got a lot of respect for him. Obviously, he's done a great job and, you know, has will continue to do a great job at, you know, with the team up north. But, um, I don't look into it too much. I mean, I saw it, and I've like I've got a very close family friend up there, John Teske, and I talk with the Teskes a little bit, and I mean, but they weren't too worried about it. It's just one of those things where it's like I think they had to do it for like publicity reasons, because I mean, why not? Because he's been so successful. Mike, how valuable do you think that you were as a football recruiter? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. So the deal with Noah. Um, He's wanted to be a Buckeye his entire life. Ever since he was five years old, he had a paper up on his wall that said, um, five-star recruit, Ohio State, NFL, Hall of Fame. Like, five years old. That was his, like, lifelong goal. Once he started to get into the recruiting process and started, to, you know, to develop his abil and his ability, he kind of started to really enjoy the recruiting process and getting all the attention from all the coaches, especially being, like, the third born and, like, being behind, you know, two Division One athletes and my older brother and then me. Yeah. You know, he kind of was like the one that was kind of left behind in a sense. So he kind of really enjoyed it. I mean, I don't know. His biggest thing was, and we, I was actually sitting in the meeting with him and Coach Meyer the day that he committed. Um, and I mean, the biggest thing for him was he wanted to make, he didn't want the pressure from everyone else. He wanted it to be his decision. And I mean, that's really, that was always my intent like I was going to love him regardless of where he went he could have went anywhere in the country and been super successful obviously I would have loved to have him here and I'm really happy he's coming um, but for me like I was just I would always tell him like I would tease him here and there about coming here um, but in the end he knew like wherever he went I was going to love him you talked about you know, you and your brother going through it did you have a different perspective on this or were you I don't know, surprised by any part of the way that football side worked and it seems like it's just a different animal than maybe what you would think. Yeah, so um, I know it's kind of a newer thing in recruiting now, but like just like the graphics that they put out, um, those were sweet. Like they, I'm, I put it on my Instagram, like there was one that they made of me and Noah. That was pretty dope. Um, <laughs> they didn't really do, I, I had like a commitment graphic that I put out that they sent me, which was pretty cool. Um, but just with the whole thing with that, and I mean, Coach Meyer, I mean, Shoot, he had me ready to commit to play football, like in some of the meetings that I had sitting down with him and Noah and my dad. And it was just like the way the guy can recruit is just, he makes you want to go there. Because I mean, like, one, because Ohio State football is like the best in the country, like everyone knows that. But then two, like, just the way that he genuinely cares about his players, regardless of, cause, I mean, there's a ton of people on the floor, like on the football team. But like, he cares about every single one of them and wants the best for every single one of them. And it was just one of those things where like his motivation and I mean, kind of, the way he makes you feel, and like, I don't even know how to describe it. His just charisma with, with people, and like, he makes you want to play for him. Like, I told you, like, I wanted to commit to play football. Like, it was crazy. Um, I was like dumbfounded by how Noah wasn't like just like jumping out of his seat. It's like, I'm, I want to be a Buckeye, you know? But, I mean, I don't know. It was a lot of the same. He loves Noah, Noah loves him, Noah loves Coach Johnson, Coach Johnson loves Noah. Um, and, I mean, that's, I'd say the only real difference was. Just really the graphic design stuff because they sent them something like almost every day and it was insane. Mike, you said you're two percent body fat, correct? Uh, I'm like 
I'm like 6.7 now, which is a little bit more healthy. Um, but yeah. Have you seen, because you mentioned Coach Q coming in and making a difference in the nutritionist. Mm -hmm. What other changes in your measurables have you seen? I mean, bench press, whatever you guys use to measure your, mm -hmm. your, your fitness, mm -hmm. where are you at compared to where you were? Well, that's actually kind of interesting. So Coach Q is like unreal with the way he's actually, the way we lift is different than I had ever lifted in my entire life. Um, so like normally like we would do, you know, squat, deadlift, bench, like for heavy, right? Try to build up and get your max. We've never maxed out. The big thing with Coach Q is building up, you know, your core muscles and that lean muscle mass so you can be explosive and you can still be mobile, like injury prevention stuff. And honestly, like my one, it's with the way that how I don't get tired. Uh, my muscles don't wear out as quickly. Um, like obviously you can have your wind and whatever, but if your muscles aren't built up, your muscles are gonna, you know, they're gonna get tired. Two, like my mobility, my ability to sit down in a stance and like move laterally has, I mean, I think, I don't know, I think people saw it last year with how I could stay in front of guards in ball screen situations and like hedge ball screens or whatever. Um, and then just with, I mean, the workouts are getting easier. I mean, I, and I honestly, like, I've seen more, like, changes in my body strength-wise and, like, seeing little cuts here and there and, like, building up that lean muscle mass than I have in my entire life. And it's just with the way that he's part of his nutrition, but it's the way that he's, the exercises that he does really focus on, you know, the muscle groups that we need to be a great basketball player. And that's probably the biggest thing that he's done a great job with. I think the biggest thing was just like it was a new coaching staff um, and it was a lot of, you know, I, like I said, the coaches did a fantastic job last year. I mean, they, we proved it in, how, in our success last year. But at the same time, like with, and it takes, growth takes time like that. Um, there, are, there are certain areas where it was just like guys were afraid to be honest with them because they weren't sure how they'd take it, whether that be like a positive thing or a negative things or something that they wanted to change or saw that something that could possibly be changed for the better, you know? And that is, so it's like really little things. Um, it's nothing like negative, like, oh, guys were lying to each other's faces all the time. It's not like that at all. It's really just like, you know, if you see something that needs to maybe be brought up as a little change that we can do to make the team better, the, like the entire environment better, bring it up. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's fix it. It's mainly just like a thing to improve the entire program in and of itself. You were talking a lot of how uh, the conversations with Urban made mm -hmm. you want to just play football right then and there. So many people fell in love with Chris Holman pretty quickly last season. Was there one particular aspect that was that's most attractive about him and how he coaches or his personality? The thing with Coach Holtman is he knows, he does his best and will always continue to do his best to learn how to coach each individual player the way that will make them the best, if that makes sense. Yeah. So there are certain guys who need to be, you know, pressed on and yelled at in order to get them to learn. And then there are other guys that need to be kind of talk to in a laid back sense, if that makes sense. So guys who are like super high emotionally, sometimes they need to be kind of settled down a little bit. Guys who like need to be, you know, give a little kick in the butt to get them to go, he'll do it. And that's probably the biggest thing that Coach Holtman does that he does very, very well. Um, besides just the whole aspect of like loving his players and loving his coaching staff and making it feel like a family. I mean, he, that was one of the things he tried to do immediately last year was make sure that it felt like a family. Like he'd invite us over to his house, have dinner at his house, same thing with the rest of the coaches. and. They always have their families coming in, all the kids running around, and it just makes it feel like a family. Um, so besides just the ability to understand, like the ability to coach each individual player the way that they that is best for them, also making it feel like a family, and that's really why everyone loves Coach Holman. I mean, because I, I think with the way he got out in the community last year, I think there was one time where he handed out donuts to all the students or whatever. Um, just his ability to make it feel like a family and make everyone feel welcome is is a great gift that he has. You, you brought it up, and what kind of guy are you? How do you have to be? <laughs> so for me, I mean, I don't know. There are some times where it's like I'm a very emotional guy, so sometimes I just need to be kind of settled down. But also at the same time, like with that high intensity and emotion, I also need to, I'm like, if I, I'm so hard on myself that I can kind of like give up at certain points and then I kind of need a kick in the pants. So I'm kind of a little bit of both. 
Um, I'd say for the most part, I need to be coached in a way that's kind of like settling, you know, because I get like psych myself out sometimes because I'm like always like yelling and let's like let's go and everything. And it's just like, okay, so take a break, you know, go slower, you know, do what you need to do, but like in a quick way, but in a controlled way. Um, so it's just little teaching things like that, probably more of a more of a like relaxed kind of guy. You kind of already mentioned this, but since you, I mean, with the short kind of summary that you guys had preparing for the upcoming season, but now, I mean, Chris Woman has like an entire summer with you guys. Other, I guess, is there any specific changes in terms of preparing? Like, does he have a certain, I guess, game plan for you guys moving forward through the summer? I guess practice schedule, or is anything different from, I guess, a summer with uh, that model? Well, for me, a little bit. So we're going to Spain in August. Yeah. Um, and so like, there are some NCAA rules where I think we're allowed to have, is it 10 practices before we go to Spain? Um, so it'll be a little different with that once all the freshmen get, you know, get in and all that kind of stuff. Um, but for the most part, it's been like, you know what, guys? I want the summer to be something where you guys can relax if you want to relax, like with the weekends and stuff. Like, he wants us to have time to be able to go to the lake with some friends, go hang out with your friends, go hang out with your girlfriend, whatever, go be with your families. Because this is the time where you can do that. Um, everyone needs some time off. You guys all know that with your jobs. Everyone needs time off. Sometimes too much is too much. And for the game of basketball, a lot of it is mental. Um, it's a big mental game. Um, and so when you can have that kind of a break, it's nice. Now, throughout the week, we're working, right? Um, we've got work lifts. We've got individual workouts with our coaches. We've got all that stuff. And then come later in the season, later in the summer, when you know, it gets closer to going over to Spain, I think it'll get a little bit more cracked down on, like, you know, practices and plays and all that kind of stuff. But right now it's just working out, trying to improve your skills even more than what you had last year, and then give yourself a mental break. Like, don't kill yourself too much because this is your time to enjoy to kind of regroup and get ready for the season. I think with the amount of scores we had last year, like especially a guy like Kata and like CJ, you know, stepped up in scoring a big, big amount. And I mean, even JT, I, mean, I don't think he scored as much, but just his, his playmaking ability and the way how he had the ball in his hands a lot more. Um, I think it just kind of happened that way. I mean, obviously, I, I think shooting is probably my best offensive weapon. Um, um, but at the same time, like, it also kind of goes into what happened with the injury, like, and just trying to find your way back in the swing of things. Because when Caleb's in the game, his game's completely different than mine. It's just one of those things where it's just, when I was in the game last year, the biggest thing I, I was told to do as my role was, you know, set screens, get off the ball screens, roll, be ready to catch the ball, or, and then occasionally, you know, get the pick and pop situation. I think it, towards the end of the year, it kind of happened a little bit more. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. You got to find your role with with each team and with the guys that we had surrounding, like like Kata and CJ and Cam and all that kind of stuff. Like those guys are all big time shooters. And when you have that, I mean, you need someone to be able to play inside and set picks and roll and open up the defense um, and make the defense scramble. So, I mean, it's something that I definitely would love to use more. Um, but at the same time, it's you got to do what the coach tells you to do, and you got to just do it to the best of your ability. One, I know your the data points you have on this are limited, but we've talked a lot about changes for next year's team. Mm -hmm. How different do you think you guys will look on court? I mean, you've talked about chemistry and leadership and those changes. And then the second quick question, are you guys watching the NBA Finals together? Um, so going to the the what we're going to look like next year, um, I'm not completely sure yet. Um, none of the freshmen have come in yet because like some of them, they all like their graduation stuff they have to worry about and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think, um, look, like I said, the coaches do a very good job of letting you, you know, learning how to coach you first of all, but then also letting you play to your strengths. So they're probably going to develop a system around the players that we have, um, not trying to make the players adapt to a system. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. The freshmen are coming in in a week and a half or a week or whatever. I don't know what the exact date is. Um, so when they get in, we'll, 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 we'll figure that out. Um, but as to the NBA Finals, I'm watching it because I'm a Cavs fan. Um, it's not always pretty. Uh, um, <laughs> but I, I think all the guys are paying attention to it. I think there's a little bit of head bashing because I think CJ's a big Warriors fan and a big Steph fan. And I mean, it is what it is. But um, 
I think the Cavs, we shoot so much better at home. So hopefully going into, you know, tonight and then, you know, game four, we'll be able to make some kind of run. Because we've been able to keep up. I mean, in game one, we should have won. That was a joke. Um, but um, game two, I mean, even in game two, I mean, the third quarter is the Warriors' best quarter. And we actually, I think, beat them by three points in the third quarter. We actually kept it close. And we shot horrible. Like, oh, my word, it was bad. So we'll see what happens in game three and four. Hopefully we can even it up. No. I mean, everyone makes their mistakes, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>